Welcome to this video about Cytel's STG, Softile Telephony Gateway product. In this video, we'll talk you through some basic routing configuration examples that you would use for outbound dialing. By the end of the session, you'll have the background knowledge needed to set up STG to direct calls to SIP devices, either to your internal agents or out onto the public phone network. Now let's talk for a moment about STG's reason for being. Firstly, it makes calls to interviewers to create a nailed up extension. Then it makes calls out to respondents. Now these could be predictive, progressive or preview calls. And then finally, it bridges the calls between the agent and the respondent, linking the two to create an end to end call. So what are we talking about when we describe a route? Well, an STG's job is to make calls, so it needs to have one or more routes to send calls onto to reach the call destination. In a typical outbound call center scenario, there are two types of calls an STG needs to make. So I'm going to draw call gem here and connect it to call gem. I have my STG. Now, on the one hand, we have the call to the agent. This will usually be a call probably through a PBX or SIP server of some kind. So let's draw a PBX in here. And over here, I'm going to draw my agent's telephone and my agent here. Typically, that would be some quite short extension number between three and five digits, perhaps usually a fixed range, often extension ranges start with a two or a nine. So let's draw extension here. Extension is two, three, four. Now on the other side, we have the call out to the respondent. Now that's typically going to be around eight digits, but maybe more. And when dialing out to the public telephone network, it may be necessary to dial a zero for an outside line. So let's just put PSTN over here and our respondent here. And what number are we going to have? Well, let's have zero perhaps for an outside line followed by zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. So we can already see that we have different types of destinations that we're sending calls to and that those different destinations expect different formats and ranges of numbers. So how is that route chosen? Well, when a call, when call gem sends a number to be dialed to STG, the STG will review all the routes that exist and check which route is most suitable for the number based on the rules that each route has. What do I mean by rules? Well, a route is a combination of two things. Firstly, an IP address or host name to which we'll direct phone calls. Now that IP address might be um, our VoIP uh, provider's session border controller, something over here, or it could of course be an internal device on your network like the PBX, or it could also be an ISDN gateway sitting on your network. And associated with that route is a set of rules that define which numbers can be sent to it and what will be done to the calls that are sent to that route. The rule set of a route determines which call sessions can be handled by the route based on criteria such as the format of the call session address or number, the capacity and congestion state of the network or network device which the route supports, the priority assigned to the route relative to other valid routes, the time window assigned to the route. Some rules can be used to condition the call session address before presenting it to the network, for example, adding or stripping a prefix. Let's look at some of the most common rule settings available. Max digits and minimum digits. STG checks the number of digits in a number to determine whether a minimum or maximum digits rule condition is met for any of the available routes. With the above configuration, only numbers that are exactly three digits in length will be sent to the PBX route. The accept and reject list compares the first digits of the number with a list in the accept or reject category and then rejects or accepts the number based on this. For example, if the accept list contains 9 and the reject list contains 97, then calls to numbers commencing 9 except those to 97 will be accepted by that route. Tenant list. You can define which tenants use a particular route with this setting. 
In this case, the route will only accept calls from tenant default or tenant 1. Route priority. If a number can be accepted by more than one route, this setting determines the order in which each is attempted. Zero is the highest priority and is the default setting. If the route with the highest priority is congested, the route with the next highest priority will be tried and this will continue until a valid uncongested route is found. This behavior is dependent on the reroute when congested setting being set to true. Max calls. This setting allows us to define how many simultaneous calls can be sent to a single route and is used when a provider has a limit on the number of channels available to use. This setting can also be used to load balance between two valid routes. If both routes have the same priority, calls will be distributed randomly between them. Congestion threshold. When a call is rejected on a particular route due to congestion, this setting defines how many consecutive call failures should occur before the route is considered congested by the system. The default setting is 5. A route that is considered congested is put out of service for 10 seconds before further call attempts are made through that route. Valid times. This setting contains a list of time range elements that define when a route may be used, for example for least cost routing. In this case, the route will only accept calls between the hours of 6.30 p.m. and midnight on a Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, or midday to midnight on weekends. Prefix. Prefix is used to add prefixes to numbers before dialing them. For example, it may be that the numbers in your database need to be prefixed with zero. This configuration will add zero to the beginning of each number accepted by the route. Postfix. Postfix is usually applied to direct calls passing through the route to a specific gateway. In most cases, we are suffixing the destination IP address of the SIP provider or device that we want to send calls to. This configuration will direct all calls passing through this route to the gateway gateway1.com. Another route may have a postfix directing its calls to gateway2.com and so forth. Strip prefix. Strip prefix is used to remove prefixes from numbers before dialing them. For example, it may be that the number list is prefixed with a 9, but this must be removed before dialing. This configuration will remove the 9 if present. Strip prefix can also be used in conjunction with the prefix rule to replace an existing prefix on a number, such as replacing a 9 with a 0. Example 1. This setting routes calls to agents extensions via the PBX. In this case, the route will only accept calls that are 3 to 4 digits in length and begin with a 2. Call addresses are prefixed with SIP and are postfixed to domain pbx.mydomain.com. Example 2. This example routes calls to a VoIP provider network, voipcarrier.com. In this case, the route requires a number that is 6 to 12 digits in length and begins with 001. Call addresses are prefixed with SIP colon and are postfixed to route to domain voipcarrier.com.